Hey guys, just got myself a Kindle here. Uh, it's an old one of a friend, you can see it's pretty worn out. Um, he broke the screen and um, gave it to me to see if I could fix it because the fault when the screen was broken, the image shown didn't look like it was a broken screen. We thought it was just a, it was stuck, so maybe a reboot. But um, once we refreshed the screen and showed a few different things, it came obvious. You can see an X pattern there, right there, the impact. Maybe in his bag or something, who knows. So um, we couldn't fix it, so he bought a new one. This one is a really old one, and I thought we'll take it apart and see what makes it tick. So uh, first of all, I've already taken the back off because um, when we're trying to figure out if it could be fixed before we realised it was a broken screen, we took it apart. Uh, it's not too difficult once you know the trick to take this thing up, to take the back off. Basically, you've got four clips. You can see one, two, three, and four. Maybe you can see them there. Um, these ones are broken because we didn't give a give much of a uh, thought to that. We didn't really care. Once we knew it was it was dead for sure. But basically, if you pop the four clips, you get like a spudger or some sort of like really thin implement, and you can kind of lever it and pop those four clips. Then you actually got to bend. You got to bend the back like this. It's really flexible because there's the four tabs. You can see one and two three and four. Um, it's easiest to go from the bottom two, you, you bend it and then flick them out and then you've got to get something in underneath to scrape the glue because I've got double sided tape onto the back here uh, for this can. Maybe just to keep it on or so it doesn't move around or feel squishy, it keeps it nice and firm. So I just use like a, you could use a, like a, 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 a dull knife, like a buttering knife or something. I use my spudging tool again and just scraped and then you can carefully peel it off and uh, then you're in. So um, this is just, I'm not sure what model this is, it just kindled to me, uh, an old style one. Um, and first thing I noticed when I took the back off was the, uh, the small little uh, RFID thing here. I'll bring it closer so you can see it there when it focuses. There we go. So it's um, just a little, you can see the antenna, the what the trace, and then in the middle that tiny black dot there, that's the uh, that's the chip itself. I would say that's for inventory tracking. It'll probably have the batch number, serial number, some information like that on this Kindle so that uh, when they're, it's going through production, they can track it. When it comes back for warranty and whatnot, they can track it. I tried to read it with my phone, with the um, NFC on my phone, but it's a completely different standard, as I expected. Um, I'm not sure what I need to read that. I don't have a reader yet. I've got one coming, but um, yeah, it'll be just a serial number. There's also a few pads here. Uh, these ones just push down onto the uh, various cans, the RF radio frequency shielding cans um, probably just uh, give it a more of a solid feel Re reduce a bit of movement inside the uh, inside the case so back down to the uh, the actual device itself I'll zoom in a little bit there alrighty and um, we've got a big can and then three smaller cans now underneath that underneath that big can would be one of the few things I can actually salvage from this device. That one. Don't even need the handle. Alright. So under here is the one thing I'm mostly interested in. I would like to salvage the screen if it wasn't cracked, but the screen's toast, so... Lithium battery. It's an Amazon brand. Assembled in China. 3.7 volt and it's a 3.3 watt hour or 890 milliamp hour so it's a reasonable size we'll disconnect it from there and um, I will try and prise that out it might be taped down so it may be a little bit difficult to remove um, but first before we do that I'm going to take this board out and we're going to have a look at the different components I got underneath this these cans. So, yep, same size there. Let's 
because I think this is a is it Android or it might be an ARM processor or something some sort of thing like that Okay, now. Aha. There we go. So that's just a stuck on bezel. And it looks like we've got more screws. These ink displays are actually really cool. They use like a little nano sized balls or particles and they're they're coloured different colours and then they're given a different charge. So you, the driver gives the the respective pixel a an electrostatic charge of one top of the other, and the balls move in a little cavity. So if the white balls are um, are given like the, the cavity is given a certain charge, and the white balls get attracted to one end, you're going to see the white either through the screen. And if you give the opposite charge, they're going to move to the back, and the black balls are going to move to the front. And with the newer displays, they can actually uh, charge it in fancy ways. Like each cell, rather than having a full charge at the top and full charge at the bottom, they can do half and half. And that way you can get grayscale, so you can have some black and some white. Then RGB, they can do varying amounts of uh, red, green and blue to give you a color display. Which is kind of pretty cool. And the thing is, once you've applied that electrostatic charge or that, you know, made the image... The charge stays there, so you, like a static charge on a balloon. So you don't actually have to keep the the display powered to show this the uh, the image. You can see there, there's an image on the screen. And I've got the battery disconnected, and that will stay there for well longer than you'd ever need it to. Anyway, long time. I'm not sure what the actual stated time is, but it's going to be a long time. Uh, another piece off, and we got more screws. And this should allow us to get that out. That's what we want. And I've slightly bent it, but no big deal. Alright, so the way the buttons on this one work. I've seen this before. Basically what they do is they've got... It's, it's got the pad like a normal pad. Or a, like a, some sort of design like this. Or the fingers, you know, with the gold, the gold plating. And then they put these little metal domes. It's not like a, a normal keyboard where you've got the rubber dome and the black bit of carbon uh, impregnated rubber. These are actually metal domes and if I press them you might be able to hear it. I'll bring that closer. If I can find the camera. You can hear that. So it gives you a nice clicky feel and it's just metal that presses down and then what they do once they put these on there's actually a clear sticker over the top which holds them in place that's how they're not just falling out, out everywhere um, I might be able to peel that sticker back there we go yeah you see that oh hang on hang on there we go you see that there you see the contacts there yeah circle on circle and then on the sticker we've got the little domes they just stick it down and there's your buttons. Pretty simple, but pretty reliable. They don't wear out so much as the, uh, the rubber. There's no rubber there to perish. And being sealed with the sticker means even if you get a splash of water, it can't get in. So the actual switch contacts are sealed almost hermetically, I'd say. Um, gives a good reliable kind of switch action there, which is very cheap to make as well. Looks like a bit of captain tape there over the, the points just to stop them shorting out on the metallic case because that's down against the metal. So yeah, that's not much to salvage from that one. But we'll open these cans and uh, let's have a look inside. Alright, so here we are with the motherboard. A bit of a close-up, so uh, let's see how we go. We got First of all, we got the ARM Cortex-A8. It's a freescale semiconductor version of it, their own implementation, which is designed for mobile devices and multimedia applications and whatnot. It's the MX50 series, and this is the i.mx508. The actual part number on here, it's uh, MCI 
MX508 CVK8B. It's a 800 megahertz, and like I said, just an uh, ARM Cortex A8. Down on the right here, we've got our uh, our RAM. It's a Samsung chip, a DDR SD RAM, eight gigabytes at uh, 200 megabits per second. So um, that's a uh, K4X 2G323PC-8GD8. So two gigabytes of RAM, and then down the bottom here, this is our uh, SAN disk actually. So you probably already guess what this one is. This is the uh, storage memory, and it's an SDI N5D2-2G. That's a two gigabyte NAND flash. Basically, the same sort of thing you'll find on a, a memory stick, um, like a USB thumb drive. And that's where you store all your books. And then this is the working RAM. And as we move over here, we will see a, a, a Texas Instruments uh, chip. This is a power management IC. And that is part number SN92009. And if you look around, you can see some, like there's a little inductor just sitting here and some capacitors and whatnot. So I'm guessing that's going to be the, the boost converter from the battery. It's going to give our, like our main, like our, our main charging circuit. Uh, so the, the USB will probably be wired into here and then from here we'll go to the battery and do the battery management. Then as we move over further to the left we've got another management, uh, a power management IC and this one is a uh, another Freescale and it is an M1389 2AJ and this one I would say is what's doing the actual voltages for all the, the gear on the board. This one will be the battery management and this is, is most likely going to be like the voltage regulator and whatnot for all of the, the arm chips and the memory chips and whatnot. And then last but not least, down here we've got an Atheros chip. Atheros, you probably already guessed it, that one's the Wi-Fi chip. This one here is a AR6103T-BM2D. It's a um, AR6103 series uh, Wi-Fi chip and you might be able to see, I'll trace around here, there's our Wi-Fi antenna on the um, on the PCB in the trace there. They haven't uh, they've excluded the fill like the ground fill from around this area. So um yeah, and that's pretty much it. USB down here. Uh, there's a little but press button here for the uh, power. Well, that might be it there. One of them LED and stuff. A few connectors for some other bump bumper buttons on the side for turn page left and turn page right our battery connector and our um, screen connector here looks like the uh, the screen is driven directly from the arm chip from this section so there's no driver chip as such that what that's that one that's on the um, on the flex here that chip is actually a uh, Macronics brand it's an IC flash, 4 megabit at 40 megahertz. It's an MX25U4035ZNI-25G. So that's yeah, um, a flash chip. Flash RAM. So maybe it's holding some information for the screen, or the, to do with the refresh of the screen, or... Yeah, I'm not actually sure. I wonder if I can get this... No, the screen looks like it's glued in. And it's a... Yeah... It's a flat piece of glass that's been glued in. So, yeah, I'm not sure where the actual driver chip is, if there even is one. Uh, it may be getting a signal straight from the, uh, the arm cortex there. Um, straight through. And this could be doing uh, refresh duties. Uh, maybe a bit of firmware. Could be anything. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, it could be running as a driver chip of some description. And um, there's a few capacitors up here. Um, apart from that, I can't really see anything without taking the screen out. Um, I can't really take the screen out though because it's double-sided taped in in such a way that if I try and peel it out, the screen's going to smash. It's already broken, but I'm going to end up with glass shards everywhere, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, you can see the uh, flat flex kind of comes up in this direction, then comes across the bottom. Well, the top, sorry. And uh, the connectors here where they, you know, it all comes down, the data this way and then this way, like a standard LCD screen. Um, yeah, 
But apart from that, there's not much to tell. Looks like there's a few LEDs up here with a light guide for a backlight on the screen there. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the Kindle. The old school style. There we go. We'll see you next time.